this is the slideshow which I use to try and set the scene before we start talking seriously about digital transformation. And it, it uses my model, which I'm sure you've come across from uh, news from the new world, that we have a choice of um, an old world and a new world, basically. Uh, and it's quite simple. The difference between the two is whether or not you are actually in a situation where you can learn faster than the world is changing or not. And if the world's changing faster than you can learn, oops, most of the things you're doing probably don't make any sense because you're doing the wrong things. There's another model, which is this links to uh, Black Swan and Nicholas Nassim Taleb, but it's complexity and it's how easy is it for us to understand and recognize our patterns versus um, the uh, connection between influencers. And the idea is traditionally, we've known what was going on. Most things have followed a normal distribution curve, but now we get many, many, many more Black Swan surprises. And the third one is connection. And this is about our ability to actually utilize the information versus the size of cyberspace, which keeps growing exponentially. And I give, think that means that the virtual world is far bigger than the real world now. So those are three slides which are important. And they set the context because most companies approach it from the old world. And the most common thing, if you're a normal organization or public sector body, is to drive efficiency. If you're driving efficiency, you'll hear in the corridors conversations which say things like, let's have a meeting to discuss, uh, or our annual KPIs or LVP has been set. Uh, we need to tell people what they're doing so they don't waste any time. So you hear things like that. That is what you do when you're trying to optimize what you have. People with that mindset, it doesn't matter what you give them. If they're chicken farmers, they'll try and turn into a chicken coop. And that's what happens with digital technology for them. It doesn't matter what you put in front of it. They try to use it for efficiency. In their minds, efficiency is about reducing headcount. So all their effort goes into that. I don't believe that's human-centered. I think that's a bad move. The funniest statement I ever heard from a CEO was, we're using machine learning to improve our efficiency and to reduce our headcount. And now we're mm. trying to recruit talent to help us drive this process through. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I don't know whether, but I thought that was very funny. You're hiring people mm. when you're firing them. Who's going to come and work with you? How stupid do the people have to be? So that's the first one. I call that old world optimized. Some of you might recognize your organizations. If you do, um, um, yeah, if you do, also, <laughs> there's no you answer do. to that. Um, you just do, okay? Let's move on. The other organizations, they're even funnier. These ones, they actually shoot themselves in the foot. You know how if you've got an old uh, suit or an old outfit and you have to go somewhere, you don't want people to realize you're wearing the same thing? You accessorize, you buy add-on. They'll do things like they'll provide everybody with well, we decided to provide everyone with an iPad integrated AI system. They just take what they currently do and they quite simply just add to it. Um, and in, sorry, I've just clicked too many times. And in so doing, they accessorize and they bolt on to what they've got. The cost base goes up, nothing gets delivered. There is no tra transformation, just addition, um, but they can for a while fool themselves. The third group are even funnier. These ones are trying to do change. And these are organizations go, we're, we're, we're generally change ready. I have here uh, two images. The first one here is a horse-drawn carriage on the left. The other one is a horse-less carriage, horse-drawn, horse-less. There's a person at the back of this thing who pays for the driver, the horse, the carriage, the training, everything else. Okay, when horse-less carriages come out, what you realize is the guy at the back here gets quite fed up because what's happened to my driver? Okay, they're there, but I had to retrain them. And I've got the horse. Now I've got to feed this horse. Uh, so the thing we always want to do is they want to kill the horse and stick it on the front of their horseless carriage. <laughs> You'll see organizations who do that. Basically, the way we have conversations with them is they say, oh, we really like Cube. And then they ask the question, how does this fit with what we're currently doing? And I smile because all they're trying to do is take Cube and then backfill it into what they're currently doing rather than saying, how does this change our organization? How do our people grow from this? So all of those are not really about uh, transformation. Transformation is here. My favorite statement always is a butterfly is not just a caterpillar with wings. And I always say it three times to annoy people. A butterfly is not always just a caterpillar with wings. A butterfly is not just a caterpillar with wings. <laughs> Think about it. Competences of a caterpillar. They walk around, they eat leaves, they can shuffle up and down stems, etc. Competences of a butterfly. Uh, flying, proboscis, drinking nectar. 
KPIs for good caterpillar behavior. Not the same. In fact, there's no overlap with KPIs for good butterfly behavior. In other words, when you transform, everything will break. Your strategy, your business model, your operations, your culture, everything is going to break if you're doing transformation. And this is the real challenge we've got because you have to work your way from one side to the other. And most organizations aren't really interested in transformation. They think that there are two elements, the more sophisticated one. They think it's about breaking what you're doing and finding something new. But there's a third element. You see all these stages in the middle? This is the chrysalis, this is the formation. There's scaffolding, there are projects you have to run, learnings you have to do, ways of working you have to put in place so that you can make the transition. It's actually three projects, not just two. So I've given you a long spiel. I'm going to give you a chance to decompress. Leo did warn you that there would be a change of pace.